Welcome back. If you haven't watched part one, make sure you do that. This was creating your SCAMP profile. Today, we're going over how we're going to use that. Did you track it? So before we go into that treatment, make sure you subscribe. I'm posting videos every single week on different mental health issues that you're going to need to know. So as we're using this treatment for the comb model, you tracked. Hopefully at this point, you've understood your sensations, the cognitive piece, the effective piece, the motor, and the place. If not, you're going to need to track those. And if you don't know what those are, you probably didn't watch the first video. I'll make sure to link that in the description and above. So here we go. Are you ready? So you, your job is to take what you've tracked and see if you can find some common themes. So you're looking at this paper and you're noticing, well, it seems like every single time I do this BFRB behavior, it's like right when I get into the car after school. Huh. And when I get into that car, I start feeling this like strong urge. I always sit in the back of the car on the right side. And my mom doesn't really ever look back to see me there. And I tend to put my elbow up on the window and I start playing with my ear. And I start feeling around for like that coarse hair that I'm just like really looking for. And I know that if I put my hand on, I feel like extreme stress or anxiety. Hmm, seems to happen at that point. So we're like, ha, ah, we just found a common theme. Way to go. So what should we do about that? Our goal is to create what's called a competing response. For instance, how can I compete with this urge, with this feeling, with this behavior? Not necessarily stop it from happening, but more say, how can I make it more inconvenient or hard for me to do? So let's take that example that I showed. You're in the car, you're on the right side, your elbow's up, you're playing with your ear, you're touching your hair. That we just know, I recognize this is a vulnerable time or moment for me. So when I get in the car, even if I don't think I'm gonna do the behavior, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna make sure to have a fidget in my hand, or I'm gonna put a Band-Aid on my finger every time I get in the car, and then when I get back home, I'm gonna take that Band-Aid off. Those are called blockers. Or I'm gonna make sure that my hands, I'm reading a book and my hands are both on both pages here. If I'm not aware that my arm even goes up, I'm gonna get something that makes me more aware of that. For instance, putting a piece of Velcro on the side of the window that you're like, you put your elbow up and it's like, whoa, that's interesting. Oh, that's different. Oh yeah, that's why I have that there. But overall, you feel an urge or not, you're gonna use these competing responses. Sometimes a competing response can be as simple as like, eh, I'm gonna hold my wrist and be really aware of what I'm doing until I get home. Super annoying, but guess what? I'm choosing to be the boss today. Well, what I don't want somebody to do is put a fidget in their hand and then just forget what they're doing. I want them to actually pay attention, make this purposeful, make this meaningful. Why do I have this fidget in my hand? Oh yeah, I'm putting it up and down my finger, I'm playing with it. I'm in, in my brain, I'm not saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I'm actually saying, eh, you totally can, but I'm choosing to do something else right now. So you're aware, you're kind of being the boss in, the, in that moment. You're feeling the emotions that are inside, you're not making a big deal of it, and you're recognizing, you're sending those signals back to your brain that say, you know what? You're telling me I need to do this behavior, and look at me, I'm not, and I'm still okay. So maybe you're wrong. With your SCAMP profile, we can create a competing response for each one of those domains. For instance, when it comes to the sensory piece, I want you to recognize what you enjoy touching, what you like. If you're looking for a coarse hair, just like the example I had, you probably want to find a fidget that has coarse hair. Some examples are to use a feather, string, dental floss, burlap sack, pipe cleaners. If you've noticed that there's a certain sound that you like to hear when that the hair gets pulled. See if you can find something to simulate that sound. It could be as simple as having that band-aid on your finger and you are putting your finger up and down that band-aid because you like that texture. And what I found for most people is that like they can't find that perfect thing that is like this is exactly how that hair feels and I love this fidget and I'd just rather do this. So don't get fooled into thinking you're gonna find that perfect thing. You might, but if you find something similar, something that is pretty close, use it. When it comes to the cognitive piece, we can challenge these thoughts. For instance, there's a thinking error called emotional reasoning. It assumes that just because we feel a certain way that our thoughts must be connected to that and it must be true. So my urge says, hey, you must pick right now. So if I feel that way, it must be true, right? So we've got to separate the two, a feeling and a thought 
don't have to be connected. So how can I challenge that? I can often say, oh yeah, I feel an urge. I feel kind of some tension or stress there. But my thoughts say that I have to. So do I have to? I have no other choice. If I don't do it, the world's gonna end. Like, no, probably not. I would hope not. Test it, test the theory out. That's how you're challenging this. How about all or nothing thinking? This is pretty common. Many individuals will tell me once I start, I just can't stop again. Think about moments in your life that are very all or nothing. Challenge it. Don't just fall for it. Recognize if you catch yourself into that behavior, challenge that thought. Do a competing response. A competing response can be, oh, I just started the behavior. Now my brain says, oh, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. That you're like, Woo, I'm going to go like this with my arms until I can't do it anymore. Or I'm going to grab a piece of ice and I'm going to hold it and squeeze it as hard as I can. Did I guarantee you, you squeeze that ice, you don't try to think about it, by the time you're done, you have a better chance of stopping that all or nothing behavior. Also, don't disqualify your positives. Recognize when you are doing well. Just because yesterday you didn't pull and today you did doesn't mean that you just aren't getting better. It means that yesterday was yesterday and today is today. And even if you pull today, then today is today. See a positive in a different way. A lot of individuals think that I'm getting better when I'm not doing the behavior. Like, no, you're getting better when you are doing the treatment, regardless if the behavior is being done or not. Because I know if you're doing the treatment, you've got a better chance of the behavior not happening. And if the treatment isn't working, we've got to change something about it. When it comes to effective and you notice the emotions that you're having, I usually see the most common ones being bored or anxious. One of these two, you're overstimulated or you're understimulated. Pay attention to that. So there's different things we can do with feelings. If I'm feeling super anxious, I could actually do some deep breathing. I could also make a fist and do some deep breathing. That's a competing response. I could also practice doing some ACT therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy. Have I accepted this behavior that I'm doing? Have I accepted myself? Regardless if I do the behavior or not, am I still me? We've got to sometimes challenge that thinking and go through accepting who you are. You're not a bad person because of this behavior. When it comes to motor, sometimes a competing response can be just a posture change. I realize that I'm, when I'm leaned over like this, I tend to be more vulnerable to picking or pulling, so I'm gonna make sure my shoulders are back. Simple. Or I recognize that the acrylic nails that I have, when those start peeling off, that's when I start picking again. So I've gotta make sure those stay on or if one falls off, I gotta put a band-aid over that thing. Remind myself like, hey, you are vulnerable. Some people use lotion. I can't pick if I've got lotion on. Some people use Vaseline on their eyes. Some people recognize that when their hair is wet, they tend to not pull. So guess what? I'm gonna make sure I shower at those times that I know I'm most vulnerable. I'm gonna get my hair wet as fast as I can because I guess what? I can't pull when my hair is wet. Some people use sleep masks. Some people use medical tape. Some people use gloves. But this is what I know. I don't want someone just to put a sleep mask on or put gloves on just because, just to avoid the behavior. That's not what this is about. We're not avoiding anymore. We are saying, behavior, you are welcome to join my life, but I'm choosing to do something different. I'm not saying, no, I'm doing this. I'm putting these gloves on so I don't do the behavior. I'm doing this behavior to say I am the boss and I'm willing to feel the emotions that come along with it and pay attention to what's happening. I might stop everything that's going on around me and just say, huh, look at these gloves. What is, what's the texture of these gloves? It's almost like you are laughing at this behavior that's like, it really wants you to do it. And you're like, cool, well, I've got these gloves on for a purpose, for meaning. I'm making it worthwhile instead of just put the gloves on. If I notice this behavior is happening in the car, I'm gonna make sure both hands are on the wheels at all times. That is my competing response. I'm gonna pay attention to this to this, let that emotion fly by if it needs to, but I'm not gonna try to control it. It's just gonna be there. So when it comes to place, here's some competing responses. If it happens only when I'm looking into a mirror, what do you think the answer is? Hmm. Well, it'd be impossible probably to say, don't ever look in a mirror again, but we need to change something about the environment. So how about when I walk into the bathroom and the mirror's right there, that I've got the lights dim or I put saran wrap over the mirror so I can barely see myself. Or maybe I have that saran wrap up and I have just a little corner that's open that I can just barely see myself. That I've got to like move my face around to actually put my makeup on or whatever I'm doing. Or I'm going to set a timer that says you're only able to look in the mirror for three minutes while you put your makeup on. Or 
If it's not even one of those times where you put your makeup on or take your makeup off, you're not looking in the mirror. You're using a different bathroom. Or you really train yourself to walk in, practice it. Walk in, use the bathroom, walk out. Walk in, use the bathroom, walk out. Walk in, whew, gets tiring, but practice it. Remove the items that you use to pick or pull. Tweezers, needles, get rid of those. Do it purposefully, be the boss. One thing that I always love is to be able to reward yourself when you feel like you're making some progress. And again, progress means you are doing the treatment. It doesn't mean that you haven't picked or pulled that day. It means I tried the competing response. It worked or it didn't work, but it doesn't matter because I did the competing response. And yay, I get that M&M or I get that treat or whatever you've decided is your reward or parent. That's the reward for their child. Figure that out with them. See what's gonna help them be engaged with the treatment. So what we need to do, take these moments that you have recognized are the most vulnerable for you. We're gonna start practicing in the car right after school. 7 p.m. when I take that shower, I'm stuck in the bathroom. Whenever I'm reading, whenever I'm on an iPad, but you just recognize those little times that you know for sure, 100%, I gotta have that Band-Aid on. I gotta have that fidget in my hand. I've gotta practice walking in the bathroom and walking right out. And again, keep that attitude of not saying no, 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 but saying yes, 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 I'm the boss. Look at me, look what I can do. But if the behavior happens, no more shame. Got it? Take it possibly as an opportunity to learn. Like, huh, which one of these guidelines or competing responses did I not follow this time? Okay, well maybe I'll try that next time. I hope this was helpful for you. Of course, this treatment has a lot more detail to it, but what I went through is pretty fundamental. Let me know in the comments below, have you tried this before? What strategies or competing responses work best for you? Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. I'll make sure to link that in this d If I notice a beat, if I notice a beat, ah, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Not putting that part in.